Hello and welcome back to the Arcane Forge. My name is Josh and today I want to talk about skill checks and saving throws. When to use them, how to use them, things like that. Before we get started though, if you enjoy this video, make sure to leave a little like, share it with someone who you think might find this useful, and subscribe for more content like this every week. We're a new channel, only little owlbear hatchlings ourselves, so all the help you can give us really makes a massive difference. Anyway, back to the video. So skill checks are your main means of discovery and interaction in the world of D&D. They're pretty much how you accomplish absolutely everything in the game, aside from talking to people. Maybe even sometimes related to that. So you'll notice down the side of your character sheet you have all of your stats. Things like intelligence, constitution, charisma, wisdom, all that good stuff. And next to it you'll see a little box that says proficiencies. Inside that box there are a huge list of different skills that your character might have proficiency in. And you should see in brackets next to it that each of those little proficiencies applies to a certain stat. Perception, for example, is a wisdom-based stat. Arcana is an intelligence one. Athletics is a strength-based stat. And acrobatics is dexterity, for example. Whenever you want to try and accomplish something in D&D, basically all you need to do is to check which one of those skills best describes what you want to accomplish. It doesn't have to be exactly related to it, and you can always ask your DM whether or not you think a skill might apply to that situation. For example, holding an ancient dusty book, you might look at it and see some symbols that you don't understand, and to gather more information about it, you might choose an arcana check if you think it's in some way magical. You could choose a religion check to see if there's any law about it, any rituals and things like that that are passed down in the collective consciousness through religion, or you can make a history check to see if you've heard about this particular volume before. All of which might tell you similar information, but they're all different means of discovery. So I've mentioned rolling skill checks before, but what does that exactly mean? Basically you roll a 20-sided dice, you check what skill you want to use, and looking at the brackets next to it, you can determine what stat that applies to. So for example, with the ancient book we were talking about a second ago, I think it's magical, so I'm going to roll an arcana check to see if I can figure out anything about this. I roll my 20-sided dice, I add my intelligence modifier, and then that'll give me a number. I tell that number to the DM, and they can tell me whether or not I've successfully passed my test in order to see whether or not I gather some more information by using arcana. The DM will always have a number, a difficulty rating in their mind that they have hopefully written down and they're not just making up on the fly, that indicates what number you have to pass by adding those skills together. Now the upside is you might be proficient in some of these skills. When you start off your proficiency bonus is 2, but that increases as you level up. And what that means for you is every time you roll a skill check in something that you're proficient in, you get to add your proficiency bonus as well, giving you a higher chance of succeeding in whatever skill you're trying to use. Don't be afraid of using a skill that you don't have proficiency in though. Just because someone is proficient in something, that means that they might be trained in it or they've spent a long time experiencing it. But you can always have a go. You might be naturally born to do that thing. You might be a natural born historian without actually being trained in it. You might roll really highly even though you don't get to add your proficiency bonus to it. What other skills? When do I want to use them? What ones do I want to pick as my proficiencies when I first start a character? Well, let's go through it. So let's start with skills that are related to strength. The first one that I want to talk about is athletics. And athletics is used to determine how much you can persevere through an arduous physical task. Let's say you want to jump somewhere, climb a huge mountain, scale a wall, swim through icy water just to persevere to get through the other side, or try and stay afloat in sinking sand. Anything that you can brute force and persevere your way through applies to athletics. Maybe you're trying to resist exhaustion, Maybe you're just trying to get that extra mile ran through this hot desert. You can just about manage that with Athletic. The strength stat is also mostly used for combat, attack rolls and things like that. But I'm not going to cover that here. We're going to talk about that in a video dedicated to combat. Strength might also be used for things like lifting a heavy object, bashing down a wooden door, trying to struggle with something heavy up a massive hill, and lots of other stuff, but I guess you're getting the picture. But moving on to Dexterity, it's one of the most overlooked stats for just about everyone who's not like a rogue or someone super sneaky. It's actually really important because your dexterity modifier can be added to your armor class if you're using very, very light armor, just because you can be nimble and dodge around. So even if you don't use any of the skills related to dexterity, it's always good to put a couple of points into it. So the first main skill in dexterity is acrobatics. Now a lot of people kind of get mixed up between athletics and acrobatics, which one's used for jumping, all this kind of stuff. Athletics is used to see if you can actually make a jump. Acrobatics might be to see whether or not you land that jump. Say you're falling from an enormous height and you want to make sure that you get down safely 
carefully, you might make an acrobatics check to see whether or not you can land on your feet, or if you fall on your ass. You might use acrobatics to see if you can stay upright on some ice, or if you want to dive between someone's legs, arriving behind them just in time to embed a dagger in their neck. Or, you know, if you just want to add some panache to combat and start doing some flips and stuff, go for acrobatic. Next up in dexterity, there's sleight of hand. Mostly used by rogues, it's a fantastic skill for trying to pickpocket someone, maybe do something slightly unnoticed, slide a bribe across a table without anyone really looking, pimp some hors d'oeuvres off a plate in a very, very fancy place that you feel you don't belong without anyone noticing, add a drop or two of poison into someone's drink, or generally anything that you can do with your hands that you don't necessarily want someone to notice. Similar to sleight of hand, but not quite, we have stealth. If you want to conceal yourself somehow or maybe slink past someone unnoticed, maybe you want to try and muffle your footsteps or try and cover your smell if dogs are chasing you. This is super useful if you want to go unnoticed by just about anyone. Now constitution is a stat that doesn't really have many skills attached to it but it's absolutely vital. You get to add your constitution modifier whenever you level up and get hit points. So it could mean that you are just that little bit extra durable the next time someone decides to start a bar fight with you in the middle of it. But you can roll constitution checks, flat constitution checks, if you want to see how well you might survive something. If you want to hold your breath when you're underwater Water. If you want to go without sleeping or go without food, maybe you're trudging through a desert and those things aren't available to you. Or if you just want to see how well you'd fare if you drink that dwarven ale that that guy recommended you don't drink. Constitution check might mean the difference between, hey I had a great night out, to I was vomiting on the floor for about two days. Intelligence, being a knowledge based skill, has an absolute ton of skills related to it. The one that I mentioned before, Arcana, is one of my favourites. Now I won't tell you if something is actually magical, it's not detect magic, you can't use it to supplement that spell. You can use it to simulate justifiable logic based around your knowledge of magic. So if you're looking at a door and you kind of get an inkling, there's a lot of runes all over that, I reckon that's some kind of trap. You can maybe make an arcana check to see whether or not you believe it's a magical trap, and in which case, how you think that might operate is a great skill for basically deductive reasoning related to certain magic schools or effects. Maybe pull up some ancient lore related to magic, maybe you want to remember something that you read somewhere about some fantastic wizard who maybe got out of a situation a bit like the one you're in. Very similar, there's history which is not necessarily related to magical things, but there is a little bit of overlap there. History is an intelligence-based skill that, just like it sounds, includes your memory of historical events. When the terrifying demon is threatening to take away your soul, if you can't remember what battle he's supposed to have fought in in ancient times, history comes in bloody important. But equally, if you've got a lenient DM and you can't quite remember what the name of an NPC is, when you go back and meet him and you're having that really awkward moment trying to remember, hi! Guy? You might make a history check to see if your personal history would come flooding back to you, at which point maybe you might be able to remember that guy's name. Investigation is the Batman skill. If you want to look at a crime scene, deduce what kind of weapon might have caused a wound on someone, put some clues together, or pour through some ancient scrolls to see what that one ring Frodo Baggins actually has might be, investigation is the skill you need to look at. Nature, or as some might call it biology, is an intelligent skill that basically revolves around everything organic. If you want to figure out why the owlbear is particularly aggressive, you might roll a skill check and find out that it's mating season and you ran straight into the middle of their den. If you want to identify some kind of poison that you reckon someone might have, or maybe figure out some kind of cure hastily, what berry might fix this just temporarily, a nature check might be a really good one to take. Nature checks are also really useful for scouting terrain. If you're hugely lost and you didn't, didn't bring a map, a nature check might be able to tell you which direction you're facing and which way town actually is. Religion is another intelligence check, and just like it sounds, if you need to remember a particular god, some kind of faith, ritual or practice, why everyone in the town is suddenly wearing purple robes and you feel a little bit out of place, maybe a religion check might come in handy. Intelligence is huge and pretty vague, so there's tons of other stuff that you can use for it, but just use your imagination. If you wanted to estimate the value of something you're being ripped off when you're haggling with a vendor, or try and communicate with someone when neither of you speak the same language, an intelligence check might just get you through. When it comes to wisdom skills, they always say intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, wisdom is knowing not to put a tomato in a fruit salad. So wisdom skills are based off of worldly experience rather than book learnings that might help you out in a pinch. Animal handling is the first wisdom skill. And it's definitely not gonna help you speak to animals, but it might just stop one of them from attacking. It might mean that the little rabbit follows you home and becomes your pet rather than runs off terrified. Animal handling covers managing and maneuvering on horseback, say through a busy city, or fleeing through a forest while being chased 
trying to calm a pack animal down. Insight, another wisdom skill, is arguably one of the most important, certainly one of my favorites. And it covers the idea of what do you think's going on right now? Based on your experience of the world, do you feel like that guy that you're talking to is actually plotting to kill you? Did he just slyly slip in a code word while he was talking to you that actually means you're being surrounded? Do you want to see if someone's lying to you? If something feels a little bit fishy, somehow not right, insight might be the skill that you need. Medicine is a wisdom-based skill, and unlike nature, which will help with natural remedies and so on, medicine is applied knowledge. This is how well will a suture hold? Can you make something to rest that broken arm? What kind of disease does your companion have? Can you heal that person with herbs? Perception, in my opinion, is the absolute most important skill in D&D because a perception check will tell you more about your surroundings. Using any of the senses, you can learn and determine more about what you see. The DM might describe what a scene looks like, what it smells like, what it feels like, but a successful perception check might tell you volumes more. You might be told that you're in a lavish room with fantastic furniture, striped wallpaper, a four-poster bed, and golden gems littered throughout every corner. A perception check might tell you that there's also a slightly strange and musty smell, or that you might hear creaking just above you. Enough of a nod to look upwards and see the undead assassin hiding on the ceiling, waiting for an ambush. It can also cover things like trying to talk to someone through a wall, spot things that are in some way disguised, hidden, or obscured, maybe through cloud. Maybe there's a secret door or a trap somewhere in this room. A perception check would definitely help you out. Survival is a fantastic skill, based in wisdom again if you ever need to fend for yourself in the wild. Do you need a Bear grills on your team? Do you want to be able to whittle a canoe out of some horrible creature that you just found? Do you need to know how to start a fire, put up a tent, distill water so it's safe to drink, predict the weather, or perhaps avoid some traps here and there that are laying out in the forest for you? A survival check's definitely the one that you need to use. Charisma is my favorite skill in the game, and if intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, wisdom is knowing that you shouldn't put a tomato in a fruit salad, then charisma is being able to sell that fruit salad with the tomato in it anyway, because hey, that's basically salsa. Charisma tells you how well you can influence other people. If you want to deceive or intimidate people, maybe you want to concoct a convincing lie, maybe you want to charm someone with your radiant beauty, then charisma will definitely help you out. Within charisma, the first skill that we learn might be deception. If you want to run a rigged gambling game, lie to someone, talk so cyclically that you end up confusing someone, pretend to be someone else, or just fabricate an entire story. Deception can be enormously useful. If you tried to deceive someone and failed, you might want to lay on some threats, see if you can get out of the situation some other way. So intimidation might be the skill that you want to pick. It's an innately hostile action that might make someone subservient, scare the living daylights out of your man on the street, rough him up for a bit more information if you want to convince a band of street thugs that really want to pick a fight with you, that they've got the wrong impression and that they should just back down. Intimidation is definitely going to be a good one. There's a little overlap between deception and performance, the next charisma skill. Performance might literally be how well do you perform a musical instrument? Can you paint a beautiful painting? Can you dance or sing or tell a fantastic story? But a performance might be acting. When acting is concerned, if you're trying to impersonate someone or even just another species, say only tieflings are allowed in this quarter, and you need to get by unnoticed, you might pretend to be a tiefling. However the hell you do it, a performance check is gonna be the way you do it. Persuasion is using your natural charm to turn someone to your side. Pretty much the opposite of intimidation. This is the good cop to the intimidator's bad cop. If you wanna foster a friendship, gain a hireling, someone in your service, or maybe charm the local tavern owner to see if he'll give you an extra drink, just on the house. Persuasion is definitely one you wanna go for. Now those skill checks are all things that you volunteer for. Whenever you get a chance, if you can speak up, or even sometimes in combat, you need to say, I want to make a perception check to see if this will happen. I want to make an acrobatics check to see if I can jump over to that thing. You might try and accomplish a feat and your DM will step in and say, if you're walking along that tightrope, I'd like you to make an acrobatics check. But largely, skill checks are when you volunteer to perform an action and either you're prompted by your DM to roll a certain check or you volunteer that check itself. You could ask your DM whether or not a certain skill is applicable. For example, when you're trying to impersonate someone, maybe your performance skill is really, really low, but your deception skill is fantastic. You could ask your DM, can I use deception? to try and pretend that I'm someone else, deceiving the people around me, rather than performance to convincingly make an illusion. You might actually put on a terrible performance, but the nearby people are actually convinced of it. But this is where skills differ massively from saving throws. Saving throws at the top of your sheet indicate some sort of treacherous situation. You'll never choose to roll a saving throw, but your DM will inflict them upon you. 
If you have proficiency in a certain saving throw, you can obviously add your proficiency bonus to it, but otherwise you're just rolling a d20 and whatever skill is applicable. They usually involve something absolutely perilous. For example, a dexterity saving throw might save you from the brunt of a charging rhino or a huge fireball exploding near you. A strength saving throw might keep you upright when a huge wave of sound is about to knock you over. Or if you're dangling from the edge of a cliff, like Mufasa and Scar, a strength saving throw might keep you attached to that ledge for a few seconds longer. A constitution saving throw is super useful if you've just ingested some kind of poison, or if you've walked into a toxic cloud. Maybe you're about to drown, or maybe you're bleeding profusely and you need to be able to survive just long enough. Your DM might make you roll a constitution saving throw to see if you fall unconscious, bleed out, or suffer the effects immediately of some kind of terrible poison. Wisdom saving throws are usually devised when it comes to sanity or to maintain your own personality when holding an intelligent weapon trying to consume your own soul. Charisma saving throws are usually used to maintain your sense of self and what that means in general for D&D because charisma is so based in innate magical properties or a sense of being that you'll only really have to make a charisma saving throw to resist being banished from this level of existence. If something enormously religious is happening to you, a god or some sort of angel, or if something's trying to exorcise a demon from within you, maybe a ghost is trying to possess you and take over your personality, and you just want to see if you resist it. I imagine a charisma saving throw might be the kind of thing that Bruce Banner has to make to resist turning into the Hulk. An intelligent saving throw is super uncommon, but it might save you from some sort of psychic attack or from someone reading your mind. Maybe you just drank a potion that's designed to make you completely feeble-minded. An intelligent saving throw might resist the effects. Now to add a layer of complexity onto all of these skills, the 5th edition rule system has something called advantage and disadvantage. A really simple way of determining whether or not a skill is easier or harder for you specifically. The dungeon master has probably already decided the difficulty level, how difficult this skill is to perform, or, or the saving throw of some kind, how difficult that is to pass. But individually, or through some kind of circumstance, you might be advantageous or disadvantageous when it comes to rolling that skill. When you make a skill check or a saving throw with advantage, you roll the same dice twice and then you pick the best result. You might get advantage on a, on a persuasion check to talk to someone from a thieves guild if you yourself are already a thief. You might get advantage on a perception check if you've got a gramophone like hearing aid right next to your ear. You might get advantage on a history check if it relates to a culture or a species that you actually belong to. If you're trying to learn more about elves, but you are one, chances are you're gonna do quite well there. But the rest of the party might not be quite so good. If your DM sees fit to give you something called an inspiration point as well, for a fantastic bit of role playing, or for having a really epic moment, you can spend your inspiration point to give yourself advantage or to remove disadvantage from whatever check you're trying to perform. It only lasts once though and you can only hold on to one at a time. I suppose to get them back you're just going to have to keep role playing really well. Now disadvantage is the complete opposite. You have to roll twice and pick the worst result. You might have to roll disadvantage on a constitution saving throw to resist freezing to death from an arctic attack when you've already just been through a lot of water and your clothes are drenched. Maybe you have disadvantage to climb this enormous mountain because you're also carrying the weight of the entire party on your back. Maybe you have disadvantage on that particular perception check because it's just started raining and it's really hard to see through. Either way, make sure to use as many skills as you can throughout your playtime to get a better sense of the world and accomplish more tasks. Don't be afraid to branch out from skills that you have a proficiency in. You can always try something. You might roll better than the person who has proficiency in that skill. So always give it a shot. Always ask your DM if one of the skills that you're better at applies to a situation. And I hope this video was useful to you. If you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, please make sure to leave a little like Maybe share it with someone who might find it useful as well. And make sure to subscribe for more videos like this every week. Until next time, I'll see you later.